Okay, today, ladies and gents, we're continuing my series on how to draw buttons and nav bars, and this is the second part, uh, how to make a stretchy button. Okay, uh, first thing I want to do is show you uh, this is a stretchy button that I've created uh, beforehand. Um, it uh, works just like any other button. Let me preview it for you and show you that it, uh, it highlights and everything works just like uh, you would expect a normal button to. Um, but what's interesting about this is that it will expand and contract with the text that you write on the button. So if I were to type in something ridiculously long like uh, my my humongously large button and drag this more centered on the screen and then uh, uh, preview that you can see that both the mouse over and the mouse off um, layers extend with the, uh, the length of the text. Uh, and now I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and press Control N to create a new, um, a new document. And I'm going to go ahead and, and draw a, uh, a rectangle again. And let's go ahead and give that a, a blue color. Um, and then I, I want to keep this really narrow because uh, when you when you start off with the with the text, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, some text now. I'm going to create something significantly large and make that white. And I'm going to go with an I. I want something small because when I Control Shift L to to adjust the alignment again, if you don't have these aligned, you can just click in the center and. To get aligned centrally in both of them, press apply, and that's going to align both of those uh, in, in the, with your centers. Um, when I do this, the the text that I originally choose uh, and any extended text on either side, um, that's what's going to be left over, right? So the space between the I and this end and the I and this end is what's going to be left over on the sides of, of your button no matter how long the text becomes. Okay? Uh, that's why I like to use an I because it's the skinniest letter that, that there is and, uh, and that way I know that, uh, that that's whatever's on, on either side of whatever letter I choose will always be this much. Okay? Uh, kind of a long drawn out explanation but that's, that's the way it works. Uh, next thing I need to do is I need to convert my um, my background shape to an edible shape. Uh, for stretchy buttons, they have to be um, converted to edible shape, so that they, otherwise they won't work. So I'm going to use my button here, uh, which converts to an edible shape. Uh, you can also go to arrange, uh, convert to uh, convert to edible shapes, or Control Shift S. Once that's done, um, I am more or less ready to go through uh, the next step, which is to name both my background. And I'll apply um, button BG is the name for button background to, uh, to the background. And then I'm going to uh, select my text, and I'm going to apply a name to it. And I'm going to be uh, button text and press the add button. Now both of these have um, have names, so I can close this, and then I need to go to my name gallery, yeah, and I want to make sure that this is uh, changed to stretches. It may not be when you first open it. Um, when I originally did my uh, my first example, this was set to exports. Uh, either way, just set it to stretches, and that that's fine. And then you want to make sure that you go to you find your button BG your your background, and you want to click on this little triangle that's off to the to the far right next to it. And when you bring that up, it's going to uh, bring up this extend um, dialog, and it's going to extend the button background. And then you need to select which named objects will make the the button background extend. Well, you want the button text to make the button background extend. Yeah, so you select that. You may have other names here. Don't worry about that. Just make sure you select just the, the button text is going to make the button background extend. Yeah. Um, then you need to choose how, um, how the button background is going to extend. We want it to extend horizontally, but not vertically. So it already is set to extend for horizontally. We need to change uh, the vertically to none. Uh, that way it'll grow uh, out to the sides and not up and down. Yeah. 
uh, press OK, and that's pretty much it. We're going to go ahead and uh, treat this like we would any other button now. We're going to go ahead and select both of them, and let me show you that here I have these two on my mouse off layer and nothing on mouse over, otherwise I would have a triangle here. So I'm going to go ahead and press Control G. That makes that a group. And then I'm going to press Control C. Select my mouse over layer. Control Shift V to paste in place. Now you can see that I do have uh, that same group on the mouse over layer. Now I want to change the uh, this slightly, the uh, mouse over, so that it has some kind of effect when you mouse over it. Uh, I'll change this to a different color. Uh, we could just change it to red, for example. That would work too. Um, and uh, then we're going to select everything, right? We're selecting both groups, and I'm going to press Control Alt G so that the text is is uh, is together in a soft group. And you can see down here at the bottom it says two uh, groups in a soft group on two layers. Exactly what we want. Um, and I can go ahead and apply my link at this time. And uh, it, like I say, it can be anything you want, as long as there's something here uh, for demonstration purposes that will act like a button. And if I preview it, uh, this works just like I set it up. Now, to make sure that uh, the stretchy part works, I can go ahead and type anything I want, like my button. And if I preview that, that works just like I said it would. Yeah? Okay, that's it. Um, I hope that was interesting and useful, and we'll see you back for part three of the tutorial.